I'm packing for my first backpacking trip of the year and my first backpacking trip in five years. So basically a beginner. <laughs> I'm a little nervous, but I'm really excited. I'm going to be meeting my friend who is currently hiking the PCT. I'm very inspired by her journey and her strength. And I'm so grateful that this is aligned, that we just happen to like be able to make it work. So yeah, let's get packing. Hoping change is gonna find me You don't have to remind me I'm doing nothing at all I'm ruminating on a blank wall While we have a bit more freedom than most people, it still can be pretty difficult to meet up with friends on the road. It just so happened that Amanda was in Snoqualmie Pass the same time that I was. And lucky for me, this part of the PCT wasn't too difficult. It was a really great trail to start out on. A little break to have some snacks and water. Okay. Going up. It could be caterpillars. Let's see. Oh, I think that is, or maybe a web. I don't know, because look, there's like flies in it. All I'm thinking about is swimming in the lake. Me too. Need to like there's so many people out here that just shit everywhere like it runs down <laughs> and then you get sick that's yes no i know that's why i'm like i'm not doing and that there's dead animals and stuff like it's just it's just not safe it's like so cheap <laughs> trying to do an update but i'm tired <laughs> we've done five and a half miles so far right that's right five and a half miles also um my hat obsessed i went into rei i didn't have a proper hat i had like a corduroy hat and like a fancy sun hat but i needed like a practical one 
And so I was looking through all the hats and like I couldn't find anything and I'm really picky if I'm going to spend money. And then as soon as I was like, I can't find a hat to Amanda, I saw this one and it was on sale. And we all know Patagonia can be pricey. So please just appreciate my hat <laughs> and my sweaty face. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, we did it. Like right here. I had forgotten a couple of things, which Amanda thankfully had. Still good? Yeah, it's, you know, when you're like, yeah. you just start to, like, your guys like, oh, the pack is on. I'm like, eh, next time we'll see. That's been a couple. That's been a couple. This is kind of fucked up. <laughs> Honestly, though, the mosquitoes aren't that bad. I slept with my tent fly off and I woke up with the sun. Should do it. Dr. Amanda. <laughs> this is me. Oh. Stepping out. This is it. I love you. I love you. I'm so happy you came out. Thank you. You did amazing. You did amazing, seriously. Like eight miles. Thank you. You did amazing. And today is gonna be like basically downhill. Can you hug again? <laughs> so proud of you. Oh my god. Thank you. <laughs> I'm proud of you too. I just have to share something. So Last night I slept with my fly off to stargaze. I was stargazing and then I fell asleep. Somebody was hiking across the lake. I think it was a through hiker hiking at night and their light woke me up. And I looked up at the sky and immediately saw a small streak of the Northern Lights. I was like geeking out because I've been wanting to see them. I've never seen them. I feel it's something I've always wanted to see, but I've never been far enough north. I just had a moment of like for everything to align, like I was sleeping and I just happened to wake up and then immediately saw the brightest green streak float across the sky so quickly in between two trees that I just happened to be looking up at. It was. <laughs> It was incredible. <laughs> so anyway, I have eight miles to get back to my van today. I considered staying another night, but I am kind of on a timeline. I have a deadline for a job coming up and I haven't gotten the product yet. It's at the post office. So I kind of need to hustle back to town and get it. Otherwise I probably would, I have enough food and everything. I probably would stay another night. I'm gonna wait for some more light to come through camp to take photos and then hike eight miles back to my van. Probably won't get back until sundown, stay in Snoqualmie Pass, but then I have to go to REI in the morning to return these pants. They don't fit right. REI opens at 10, but I have to get to the post office in Leavenworth, which is like an hour and a half to two hours away from REI. And it's Saturday, so I think it would close a little earlier, the post office. 
And if I don't get there before they close, I have to wait till Monday to get my product. And the deadline is Tuesday. I waited a couple hours for the right light only to realize that I was never really going to get it. The ideal lighting was at sunset and I just simply couldn't stay. I knew I was making the right choice to pack up, but there was something in me that just couldn't accept I wasn't going to get the photos I wanted. This is a battle I often face, trying to just enjoy the moment as is, regardless of what photos I get. If there are any photographers watching this, you know that feeling is hard to shake. Even still, I had an amazing experience and I was ready to get back to my van. Everyone's gonna be like, shut up Jess, but if you know me, you know that I have no confidence in my physical abilities, but I'm just doing this. <laughs> I did it, I'm doing it, and I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> Time for water. This is so exciting. <laughs> All right, I've been cranking and I just dunked my head and hat in the water, so. Let's keep cranking. I definitely pushed my physical limits on this trip, but these 16 miles really just ignited something else in me. It made me wonder where else my feet could take me. Unreal. I wanted the challenge, so I started hiking more. I hiked to some really beautiful places. And I can't wait to share these stories with you next time.